If you want to learn how to make a VR flashlight, then you came to the right place. To follow along in Unity, go to the description and download the free VR template and additional resources. Open up the VR template, add the additional resources, and we're ready to get shrimping. Opening up the project, you can see that I've already duplicated our main scene here and I've named it Flashlight Tutorial. And yeah, with that, let's learn how to make a flashlight. Starting things off, I think we should make the sky a little darker because, well, flashlights work a little better in the dark. So I'm gonna come over here, go to create, go to material, and then name this uh, dark sky. And if we come up here to the shader and type in procedural, give this a click, it is going to create a skybox procedural material. And all we have to do is drag this into our scene and now it's applied here. And we can play with some of these settings and make our scene a little darker. Kicking things off, we can increase the size of the sun, which is kind of the opposite of what we want to do. We can also do the sun size convergence, but we'll leave those be for now. We can also play with the atmospheric thickness, which, you know, kind of gives it a bit of a spooky look. So I might lower that a little bit. And then finally, the exposure. Yeah, and lower that right down. Yeah, how about a 0.22? Now, one other thing we can adjust is actually where the location of the sun is. So if we open this up, you'll see the directional light here, and I can adjust the rotation, and you'll see that it's like the sun is setting. Oh yeah, there we go. Now that our scene is dark, let's add a flashlight to the scene. And in our resources, I've already provided a model, so you just have to drag that into here. You'll see it'll throw it right on top of the table, and if we expand it, we can see that it's made of a body, a head, and a lens, and that's about it. Let's add some light to this. So I'm going to right click here. I'm going to go down to light and add a spotlight. And the reason I'm adding a spotlight is because, well, it already operates kind of like a flashlight. You see it shoots out this cone here, but it's not facing in the right direction. So let's adjust some things really quickly here. So we have it in the right position. Now let's play with some of the light settings. See, it's not really emitting too much light. We can play with the range and this is gonna be how far it shoots out. We can also play with the spot angle, which is gonna be how narrow or wide. And I kind of like a flashlight at 70. Next, we have the intensity, which is really gonna change things. You can go five, 10, you can see it's really getting intense. Oh, 70, my bad. But you know, what? I, I do like it at five. I like it a little more subtle, not so bright. Yeah, that's starting to look like like a flashlight. So it's already starting to look like a flashlight, but let's take it a step further. And I think we're gonna kick things off by adding a cookie to it. And what a cookie does is it adds a mask to our light. And so it will simulate some shadows and it will add a little more complexity to our lighting without too much of a performance hit. To show you what I'm talking about, first I'm gonna rotate this. And you'll see that I've rotated it and put it above our table just so we can look down and get a better perspective of things. And you know, I'm gonna turn off this gizmo. There we go. And so let's add a cookie to our spot. And if we come here, you'll see I have this PNG called flashlight cookie. We have to come up here. We have to change it to a type of cookie and then apply it. And now you'll see that it's changed it. And this is what it's gonna mask. It, see, this looks a little too uniform and this should help soften the edges a bit. So if we go into the spotlight again and drag this in, you'll see that it's softened out those edges. And if you wanna add more complexity to your flashlight, you can also add a shadow and I'm gonna go soft shadow and you're gonna see it's complaining here. To fix that, you just go down to mixed and now you should be good. And we got a little shadow around the box. All right, so let me throw this right back on the table. So the flashlight's back on the table, but you know what? I'm going to increase the intensity because it's looking a little dim now that I've added the mask and I'm gonna crank that up to 15. And I like that and you can see that shadow effect. So we have a proper light. Now let's make this grabbable. So we're gonna come over here, add component. We're gonna make it XR grab interactable. And you'll see that it added a rigid body to this. And we want to add a few things. Since this is comprised of multiple objects, I am going to first make a empty object and call it attach point. And this is where we're going to attach from since we're picking up the flashlight. We can't just hold it in our hand and have it shine in our face. We want it pointing forwards, typically. Maybe you want to shine in your face. We also want to play with which is going to be the collider that we're using to grab this object. And I think the body is a pretty good collider to use. You can see it has a decent size to it. And that's typically what people are going to be reaching for. So we're going to press the plus sign here and drag the body in there. 
drag the body in there. I should really watch what I'm saying. Anyways, and then we also want to change the attach point or the attach transform and we put that right here. Now, if you remember with XR Grab Interactables, you want the objects that you're grabbing to attach in a certain way. That way the flashlight stop pointing straight up. So we have the X, Y, and Z axis, and you want the X axis to be pointed towards the palm of your hand. You want the Y axis to point upwards how you want the object to point upwards. And then Z is gonna determine what faces forward. Since this is a cylinder, what's going towards the palm of our hands or what's considered up of the object isn't too important. What's important is how this object is pointing. And we want this Z axis to point this way. That way, when we grab this, it's going to just have the flashlight point forwards. Now, when we're adjusting this, you want to make sure that it's set on local, not global. If you get global, you're not going to get the right angle. If you set local, you'll see it changes. And that is local positioning to this object itself. So what I'm going to do is go to the attach point and enter in some values. And you'll see I've rotated this uh, 270 degrees on the x-axis and now that z-axis is pointing forwards. And before we start up the scene and test this out, I forgot I need to change this interaction mass to interactable. There we go. And you can see that I can grab the flashlight and it's pointing in the right direction. Nice. With that, there's one last thing I want to add to this flashlight, and that's going to be this flashlight script right here. And I'm going to drag that there, and there we go. And let's see, it's asking for a material, a lens material, so I'm going to drag this here. And let's open this up and see what we got. This script is about as easy as it gets. You can see we have a few variables here. We got that public material, that's the lens. We have our light, which is gonna be that spotlight and an audio source, which we're gonna add to the flashlight in a moment. The start function, we go in, we get these components, and then we have two public functions. One turns on everything, one turns them off. Uh, it plays a sound, but there is an interesting function here, which is enable keyword emission. And let me show you what that is really quick. If you look over here, this material isn't looking too bright but if we click a mission it kind of shines so that's all that does and yeah that is our flashlight script let's finish up by adding a audio source so if you remember the audio source needs to be placed on the flashlight according to the script and now that we have the audio source let's expand it we need to change it to 3D space. We need to add an audio clip to it, which is gonna be this toggle light. And then play on awake. I really don't know why Unity has this as the default. It's kind of annoying. Finally, to wrap everything up, we need to make sure we are calling these public functions. We probably wanna call it when we pick it up and then when we drop it. So if I add a plus sign here, drag the script in, and finally go to flashlight, light on, light off that should work to make things even better you know what i'm gonna start things off by having this light turned off that way when we pick it up it will turn on and turn off i mean it doesn't really matter it's up to you how you want to do this and let's boot up our scene and see what we have and you can see if i grab it it is turning on and if i drop it it turns off hey halloween is coming up so let me know if you're making a scary game and if you found this tutorial useful i'll see you in the next one Bye bye